Computing limits using the definition is hard. Fortunately, we have a number of rules which make our task a lot easier. These limit rules allow us to compute a lot of limits using only two very basic limits. Whenever possible, you can try to apply these rules instead of giving a difficult epsilon delta argument. So these rules will make our lives a lot easier. Let's take a look. Well, first of all, you need to know two basic limits. If f is a constant function, then if you approach any num number uh, a, the limit will just be this constant. So limit x to a of constant c is just c. And if f of x is the identity, so f of x equals x, uh, if x approaches a, then limit x to a uh, is just a. So we know those two basic limits. And using those two, we can compute a lot of other limits. First of all, uh, we can have, the, uh, say, rule 0, a constant multiple. Uh, if we have scalar c, and if our limit uh, x to f, f x exists, then we can take the c out. So we can take the c in front. So we get this limit over here, always if the latter limit exists. So how we apply this, for example, uh, if you have the limit x goes to 2 of 3x, you can take the 3 in front, so 3 goes in front, you get this limit over here, 3 times limit x to 2 of x, and that is a basic limit, so we know that one, so that equals uh, that limit equals 2, so we get 3 times 2 equals 6, and there we have our limit. Uh, that was rule 0. Rule number 1, the sum rule. This one is already slightly non-trivial. If you have that the limit x to a f of x exists, and if the limit x to a of g of x exists, so if these two limits exist, then the limit x to a of f plus g, you can take them separately. So the limit x to a of f plus g equals limit x to a of f plus limit x to a of g. So how does it work? For example, if we want to compute the limit x to 2 of x plus 3, you can apply the sum rule. You t uh, instead of taking the limit of the sum, you can take the sum of the limits. So you take the limit x to 2 of 2 plus the limit x to 2 of 3, uh, and those two limits are basic. Those equal 2 plus 3 equals 5. And here is really the first careful. This rule only applies if both limits exist. If you take, uh, for example, this very silly one, limit x to 0 of well, 1 over x plus minus 1 over x, so what's inside here is 0, so that it should be 0, that you cannot take those separately, because that would be this limit plus that limit, and both of those limits do not exist. So here you cannot apply the sum rule, because you can only apply the sum rule if the separate limits exist. In practice, this is no problem, because you just apply the sum rule, and you see whether the limits exist. If they exist, you are happy, because you are done, and if your limits do not exist, you know that you couldn't have applied the sum rule in the first place, so you have to go back anyway. So in practice, this is no problem because you see what happens uh, uh, whilst doing your computations. Rule number two, product rule, very similar to the sum rule. It basically says that if, again, limits x to a of f and limits x to a of g, if those two limits exist, then the limit of the product equals the product of the limit. So limit of the product, fg, equals lim x to a of f plus lim x to a of g. So how does that work? If you have, for example, this function over here, x times x plus 3, is or a slightly less trivial function. Well, we can try to apply the product rule that equals the limit x to 2 of x times limit x to 2 of x plus 3. Then we compute those two uh, limits separately. Well, the second one we have already done, it equals 5, and the first one is a basic limit, so we get 2 times 5 equals 10. And again, be careful, because over here I wrote 2 in a difficult way. 2 over x times x is 2, so if we take x to 0, that will be just 2, uh, because it's a constant function. However, if we try to apply the product rule here, we get this limit x to 0 of 2 over x times limit x to 0 of x. The second limit exists, but the first one does not exist, which means that we were not allowed to apply the product rule 
in this case. You see this product, yeah, well, what's the limit over here? I don't know. Something like something going to infinity times zero. So you can only apply the product rule if both limits exist. But again, you will notice. You apply the product rule, you see whether you can compute your limit. If you couldn't, you could have applied the product rule in the first place, so you have to go back anyway. Rule number three. If you have products, we also have quotient. So rule three, quotient rule. Works again very similarly. It states that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, but with some restrictions. First of all, those limits over here need to exist, just as with the sum rule and with the product rule, and you cannot divide by zero. So a limit x to f g of x is not allowed to be zero. In that case, you can apply the quotient rule. So how do you do it? If you have x to 2 of function 3x, for example, you can try to apply the quotient rule. Uh, the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limit, so take the limit of the numerator divided by lim the limit of the denominator. Both exist. Uh, we have done them already. They were 5 and 6, so the limit of this quotient equals 5 over 6. But here you need to be uh, really careful. Uh, take, for, for example, limit x to 0 of 1 over x. If you would try to apply the quotient rule here, you get limit x to 0 of 1, which is 1, divided by limit x to 0 of x equals 0. So both limits exist. But now uh, you are dividing by 0, the, uh, li this limit of g equals 0. So that means you cannot apply the quotient rule over there. So be particularly careful when applying the quotient rule. But you see, with those few basic rules, you can already compute a lot, a lot of limits. So they are really nice to use, but be careful about their restrictions.